Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Air Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is June 28th and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery and you can see the marine layer up against Vancouver Island into the Puget Sound down the Oregon coast. Already starting to retreat for many areas here as we go through the late morning hours, but you can see it's still kicking into some of the valleys there along the Olympic Mountains. Pretty amazing. You can see that on the GOES-18 satellite imagery. Still have this spin in the atmosphere east. At least for one more day, we could get some thunderstorms across the Cascades and then we're really going to kick this system out of here as we go through the next few days. We'll take a look at that in some detail. And we're going to warm up for some areas here across Pacific Northwest and get downright toasty. I'll show you that forecast coming up. You can still see some smoke across BC and Alberta out there. Still some fires going across Canada. Hopefully not a sign of things to come as we go through the summer months. Now this is looking at paradise. No marine layer, nice blue sky, some old snow out there. But again, if you're across the backcountry, watch out for the thunderstorm development today. Should be a bit less than in previous days, though. This is Seabrook. Check it out. There's actually some breaks there in some of the stratus layer. Not too bad of a day along the coastline. Always a good place to go beat the heat across BC, Washington, and Oregon coastlines. This is a gale warning down the street of Wanda Fuca. And I wanted to show you guys this. You can see it in the high resolution model. As you go through the day today, watch these wind speeds really kick up through the street of Wanda Fuca. East slopes of the Cascades as well. Pretty typical summertime pattern here. That's why we have so many wind farms out here, East slopes of the Cascades. But you'll notice they relax again as we go through Thursday morning. And they redevelop all the way down towards Whidbey Island, Port Angeles there. Mother Nature's air conditioning just blasting down the street of Wanda Fuca there. Pretty interesting to watch that go. Some gusts could get up towards 40 miles per hour in that activity. This is hot temps this weekend. Look at Medford and Klamath Falls, upper 90s. Lakeview and Summer Lake above 90. And if you want to beat the heat, look at Brookings, 65. Big difference between Medford, Oregon there. This is Thunderstorm Outlook. Again, one more day for the Cascades before this starts to kick off to the east here for the next few days. This is Missoula, Montana. Again, widespread thunderstorms during the afternoon and evening. And, you know, watch out if you get towards one of those heavier showers out there. Still could get some flooding concerns. And even for Montana, going to warm up here and dry out a bit here as we go through the weekend. This is looking at the three-hour precipitation total here on the European. You can see that activity across some of the Cascades here. Blue Mountains, Idaho, Montana, BC. But then watch as we go into tomorrow. We're going to reduce that thunderstorm threat and push it off east. Maybe the Rocky Mountains of BC, Alberta. Some of Idaho, Montana, Yellowstone, they're getting some thunderstorm activity. And then even further as we go on in through Friday. So we're going to dry out here pretty well across Pacific Northwest. We've already been pretty dry here across portions west of the Cascades as it is. But that's going to just continue. This is looking at 18,000 feet, 500 millibars, Alaska. BC, Washington, Oregon, there's that trough kind of keeping that thunderstorm activity going for the last few days, but you'll notice it gets out of our region. We have a trough moving through BC. It's going to kind of suppress temperatures a bit, especially across BC here, and keep the ridge somewhat flat, but you'll notice that kicks out, and then we really start to build this ridge in here across Pacific Northwest, and some areas are going to get downright hot. More on that here in a moment. This is 850 millibars, 5,000 feet. You can see out of the above average temperatures we've been getting here, and the trough moves through, keeping things relatively chilly across BC there, and then you can see that temperature really start to build here along the west coast. This would be towards Monday night of next week, and this is on July 3rd. So looking like a warm July 4th coming up here. And again, more on that here in a moment. Now look at this, 74 yesterday, 73 is the average high. Now we're at 74 being the average high for this time of year. And look at, today's the day, two years ago, we hit 108 at SeaTac. Just an incredible temperature. I don't know if I'll see that beat in my lifetime. It's hard to say at this point, but what an incredible heat wave. The last of the extremely hot three day stretch we had back in June, 2021. This is looking at six hour max two meter temperature. So here we go. This would be today, 79 Seattle into the mid 80s for a lot of the Willamette Valley there. Now this would be Friday afternoon. Look at 100 degree readings over in Eastern Washington there. California warming up. Look at the Willamette Valley, upper 80s. Seattle probably up towards 80 degrees again tomorrow. And then Friday afternoon again, quite warm across the region. Look at 102 degrees towards the Tri-Cities out there. But I'll show you some of the ensemble members here in a moment to take a look at what potentially we have coming up in our future here as well. This would be July 1st. Nothing different there. There's July 2nd. 
There's July 3rd. Look at the warm temperatures across the region. Now the 4th of July. Look at this. Up towards 90 for Seattle. Not out of the question. Portland 100 degrees here showing up on the European model here. So pretty impressive heat coming here as we go towards the 4th of July, folks. Let's look at July 5th there really quick as well. Not much change. I mean, look at the European as of yesterday afternoon. It had 95 for Seattle. Just incredible. 100 degrees possible for the Willamette Valley. We'll see how this trends. I mean, we're looking kind of far out there in the future. So I don't want to get people's hopes up too much if you love the heat or you know sometimes a lot of people around here are mossbacks too and they don't want the heat but look at the tri-cities here so this is the mean and the green the control and the blue a lot of these temperatures above 100 then look as we go on into the future a little bit more here the ensembles start getting a little bit crazy here but some of the models yesterday had into the low 100 and teens in some of the ensemble runs here but generally pretty good agreement that we're headed for some 100 plus degree temperatures here as we go on into the early portions of july here for portions of eastern washington this is portland international look at yesterday afternoon's run the control had over 100 degrees here, 103 at Portland for the 4th of July. Very impressive. July 5th, again, very hot. But you see, there is some discrepancy here. The mean is down into the 90s, and some of the ensembles have it into the mid and upper 80s here. So we still have some work to do for watching this forecast. Pretty good agreement right now up until about July 2nd. And we start to diverge a little bit here, but it is showing signs of warming up quite nicely here across Pacific Northwest. This is 10 day precipitation anomaly much of the region is going to be included here which is not good because we're already really dry at this time of year anyway and you can see this is 10 days european not a drop for seattle or portland or vancouver bc here eastern washington and really this is just thunderstorm activity here probably for tomorrow here so not looking for much precip across a lot of the region except central and northern bc here as we go through the next 10 days and some thunderstorm activity across wyoming and montana here in idaho yellowstone etc this is six to ten day temperature probability definitely looking for above average conditions here through july 7th and this is six to ten day precipitation outlook drought monitor not updated since the 22nd still looking at that moderate drought across the cascades here so watch out for any fire starts as we go on in through july hopefully we don't head that way as we go on into the summer season and i've been showing this one uh, day by day here and you can see the La Nina conditions. So this is the temperatures across the water of the equatorial Pacific shown here. There's South America maritime continent and you can see the very warm water that's been emerging off the coast of South America. Put that into motion and you can clearly see the above average conditions starting to emerge across the central pacific here and we are now right on the cusp the threshold of moving into moderate el nino conditions here across the equatorial pacific it's going to equal some interesting weather here probably across the west coast as we go on into the fall and winter months this is looking at the daily cfs forecast still calling for us to get up towards the two uh, Celsius uh, region there and once you get above 1.5 you are in strong El Nino territory and right now we are on the cusp of moving into moderate so anyway yeah I hope you guys get out and enjoy some of this weather coming up here watch out for the thunderstorms popping up over the Cascades one more day then we're really going to relax some of that thunderstorm activity here across the region but we are definitely going to warm up towards the 4th of July and the only thing I don't like about the 4th of July being too hot here is hopefully we get some wind, you know, ventilate some of that smoke. We can build up quite a bit of smoke here with the firework activity. So that's kind of the only downfall of being pretty warm on the 4th of July. So anyway, hope you guys are liking these videos. Leave some comments below. I'll be doing another weather station giveaway. If you are a member of this page, you will be entered automatically in that weather station drawing here. So I have a few more to give away over the next several months. But if you are a member, you'll be entered automatically. So anyway, yeah, hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow.